Hi everyone, Dr. David Culler here with Synergy Wellness. Today we have uh, Laura here uh, who's dealing with some hip issues. For those of you dancers, um, you're probably familiar with the hip injuries, very common hip, toes, knees. In fact, I think I saw you a while ago for your ankle, if I remember correctly. It's been years. years. Yes, since then she has exploded on the dance scene. Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, uh, a rocket. What else am I missing? Uh, traveling the world. With traveling the world Ultra. with Ultra Dance mm -hmm. Festival. So she just came back from Croatia, right? Yeah. So that's probably a, a fun job. I used to be on the other end of that out in the, yeah. you know, <laughs> when I was a teenager going to these music festivals. So they're a lot of fun. And now she's working on a new show, um, but we won't mention that because um, you're not allowed to, right? Mm -hmm. So she has hip pain. Obviously, she's a dancer. She's gone through so much as far as just with the Rockettes. I'm not even going to try to do this because you're going <laughs> to laugh. But, you know, they kick their leg up. That's about as far as I can go. And you probably go up to your head mm -hmm. level, right? Famous so, eye high kicks. Yeah, so I'm concerned about a labrum tear. Of course, that's the first thing. Um, she said she had some pain internally and externally rotating. But when I internally and externally rotate her hip here, she doesn't have pain. So... What that tells me is, you know, for some people that are dancers and they're a little bit older than her, arthritis could be an issue. But she also told me she has it when she's walking or climbing stairs. So that tells me that it could be bursitis, okay? Her hip joint goes to the, you know, a good range of motion, both internal and external rotation. When you internally rotate, you want the foot or the ankle to come up near the pocket, almost up to the pocket, just about a hand width below the pocket. So it does that. And then here, you want it to come out about 25 degrees to 30 degrees away from the table, the, the ankle. And it does that without pain, correct? So we'll check the other one, even though this one uh, is not what she's complaining of. Okay. Okay, no pain there and same range of motion. So that tells me there's probably not arthritis here and also her age. It also tells me this probably is not a labrum tear, but we're going to do one more check. I want you to bring your knee to your chest. And do you get a pinching feeling when you do that? Um, it's like a slight pinch. Yeah, okay. Right in the crease. So that, that's a good indicator that there might be a, a labrum tear right there, that test. So what's going to rule that out? Well, a CAT scan, we could also do a MRI, but she may also have some bursitis as well. So we're going to laser the hip and address the bursitis. And if she's dealing with bursitis, we're just going to distract her, her leg and, and open up that hip joint to allow the bursa to slip back in there and, and get less irritated. And we're going to laser that hip as well to reduce the inflammation. So what I'm going to have you do is lay on your stomach. So at the Ultra Music Festival, you must have been like dancing all day and oh, yeah. night. I mean, it was 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Straight dancing? Wow. Breaks in between, but you know. Wow. A lot of work cut out for us. Yeah, so her hips are a little bit off. We're going to definitely correct that first. So let's have this side up, your left side up. So we're just going to do a pelvic correction here, and then I'm going to have her stand up and internally and externally rotate. The fact that she has pain while she's weight-bearing tells me it's probably more a bursa. Can people have a bursa, bursitis, and a slight tear in the labrum? Yes. The nice thing about the labrum is it, it surrounds the whole hip joint, right? So it's cartilage that holds the entire hip joint, 360 degrees, just like we have in our shoulder. So you can tear a portion of it and be just fine, never need surgery. And I'm a great example of that. I tore my cartilage in my shoulder last April. I had a bike accident and I have a, what's called a slap tear. So it's the anterior, posterior, top of the the labrum right up here that's torn. It's only a partial tear. I rehabbed it, no surgery. So um, same goes with the hip, okay? And if you do have a tear, it's a very small one, if you have one. Go ahead, take a deep breath in. And blow out. Good, and the other side up. Okay, and 
take a deep breath in again. And blow all the way out. Okay. And stay just like that. We're going to laser your hip. So, I'm sorry, the affected hip facing up. So put your, your painful hip as the right hip. So lay on your left side. So this laser checks for inflammation and soft tissue damage. Okay. So I'm going to put the sensor on um, to check if there's any inflammation underneath that hip joint. So I'm going to start over here, okay, away from the area. And there we go. It did beep right over the hip mm -hmm. joint. So it'll tell me how long to dose it. We've done some videos on laser. So some of you, you know, have seen those videos. This is a unique laser. There is no, this is a patent this company has. So I've never seen a laser that can detect uh, areas of inflammation or soft tissue damage. This machine is uncanny. I mean, it, it picks the spots out right away. We're gonna go down your IT band and make sure your IT band isn't tight because a tight IT band is gonna do what to a bursitis? Mm, it's gonna irritate that. Yeah, so you wanna make sure that IT band is nice and loose. So we're gonna run this laser down her IT band and make sure there's no irritation to that tissue. Foam rolling it is a great way to irritate it more mm -hmm. with bursitis. So I don't recommend foam rolling it, but maybe using a Theragun or cupping or gua sha or there's so many different techniques. I could K-tape her, so many things I could do for her. So, and we, and we may do that if we find a lot of that in her leg. And if we do, maybe we'll shoot another video on that or something if she allows us to. So it's dosing now for a while, right? So it tells me there's a good bit of inflammation here. This is a 50 watt laser. So typical dose time is 90 seconds and we're well, we're past 90 seconds here. So that tells me there's quite a bit of inflammation here in the joint. And we're gonna go around that hip joint in different, from different angles. That's so cool. Yeah, this machine's great. Tell me, is that tender? Yeah. Okay, so you heard it beep again. It's done dosing that area. And we're just going to scan around the joint. All right. So for those of you that are watching that don't know what laser does, and I, I don't know if you know, but it reduces inflammation. It makes a uh, cell wall more permeable, allowing fluid inflammation to leave the cells and uh, nutrients to pour in and speeds up the healing time, basically. And just like you have a bursa in your hip, you have a bursa in your shoulder as well. And you do bar classes, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're in bar class, you have to lift your leg up onto a bar and mm -hmm. you're doing that a lot. Yeah, and it's like micro movements as well. So being that it's like dance inspired where you're like turned out in first position or second position and micro movements and like mm -hmm. the pulses and stuff. There's a, there is a lot of leg and, and hip and uh, leg movement. So you're doing that all day long. So you're yeah. taking how many classes a day? Because so you're I'm, showing people how to do it. It's not. It's more of an advanced exercise. Bar is not mm -hmm. something you just tell people what to do. You actually have to show them. Correct. What, yeah. So how many classes a day? So average I teach about two or three. Okay. So Monday to Friday. Okay, so two to three hours of bar a day. That's a lot. Yeah, on mm -hmm. your hip. Can you avoid putting the right leg up and do it on the left side? I've learned to sort of get them into the positions and then more so focus on like corrections and keeping cueing that way so that my body isn't taking most of the beating. Yeah, and then you walk around the room and correct people. Yeah. Yeah, being smarter. I think yeah. being smarter about that, absolutely. And form for me is number one. Like, I, I know a lot of classes, like, I've seen them and gotten into them where, like, a lot of instructors will just not really kind of pay attention to other people's form, but I feel like that's the number one thing that people are there for is for you to be able to guide them and to keep them on track so they're not getting injured as well. Yeah, and showing people form is hard to do because form is typically subtle. Oh, there we go. So it, it uh, not to get off topic, but it, it was dosing that area for a while too. Yeah. But yeah, going back to form, form is huge. Yeah. And oftentimes form is subtle. That was just the timer going off. We're gonna do it again here. So it's really something that you may also not only have to explain, but actually go and 
and move them into that right position. Yeah. And this will help save your body for what you really love to do, which is Broadway and, you know, all that, that kind of stuff, dancing. And, you know, your training is in ballet, though, right? Yeah, I started with ballet. And then um, over the years went from ballet to jazz and tap and um, modern and contemporary and a little okay. bit of commercial work and stuff. So now moving a little more into the hip hop styles like street jazz and heels and, and things like that. Okay. So, yeah. All right. And I'm not going to ask her about her experience at the Dallas Cowboys. I know probably a lot of viewers want to hear about that. Um, but we'll probably keep that between <laughs> us. Um, I so yeah. We're not saying bad or good. We're just keeping our mouths mum about the, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. And I'm a Giants fan anyway, so yeah. who cares about <laughs> Dallas Cowboys? Sorry for all you Cowboys <laughs> fans watching down in Texas or wherever you live. Um, Giants don't have cheerleaders, so they don't. yeah, and I, I don't even know how many teams do have cheerleaders. The Cowboys, I think, There's maybe. A few now. The Broncos. The Broncos. The uh, Chiefs. Seahawks. The Seahawks. Chiefs. Okay, the Chiefs. Okay, so Dolphins, there's. Dolphins. Okay. Atlanta. Really, Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah the Jets so there's still some too. team. The Jets do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, look at the that. Jets flight crew. Is that what they're called? Yeah. The Jets flight crew. There you go. So, all right, still alive. But the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders are sort of notorious. Yes. Okay, so it's lighting up yes. all over the hip joint. The glute, attachment, you know. If you're not improving in four weeks, okay. then I will definitely send you out for an MRI. And I know for some, they don't have insurance and things. So uh, if you're someone watching this and you don't have insurance and you live in New York, don't hesitate to call us. We have all sorts of different options for people that don't have insurance. And we, um, I've been doing this for 20, over 22 years. I even have connections at MRI facilities and it will sometimes beep over the same spot at MRI facilities. So if you need an MRI, we have x-ray here, but if you need an MRI or a CAT scan, I can get them for you at a huge discount. And sometimes, you know, these tests are really important to rule out certain conditions that might be really serious. So again, if you don't have insurance and you live in the New York area, New York City metropolitan area, don't hesitate to call us. Don't let that be a, a barrier to you getting the, the right help that you need. And you see here, it's still... Is it normal to kind of tingle? Do you feel the tingling? It may also be just from laying down laying this down. way for a while, yeah. Would it be silly to like go directly to the pinpoint of like the discomfort, like at the front of the hip, like where I'm Yeah, we're gonna do that. Hand. Yeah, we're gonna do that yeah. too. Cause that might be where the labrum is torn, mm -hmm. right in the front, so yeah. Yeah, I've just gotten to the side of her hip joint and we've found a lot of spots there. Yeah. So scanning the front definitely, um, instead of scanning, I may just go and put it on a few s yeah. spots, just, just cause of the sensitive area for yeah. you, so. I'm curious, like, I didn't even think that it would have noticed something, like, on the back end because I wasn't feeling any discomfort there. Well, and again, I could scan it in here. We'll save that for another time, maybe, you know? Yeah. But um, right now I'm going to place it right in the front here, mm. so right in here yeah. and a little bit further in. Okay, ready? Yeah. Just relax there. We're going to take a little commercial break, folks, mm -hmm. and... Um, We'll uh, show you the end of this treatment. Thanks for watching so far. Hang tight. We're not done. Thank you guys so much. If you got anything from this video, or even if you just like this view of the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building, give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe. Appreciate you guys.